Well, allergy season is in full swing with the summer months coming up. Children will be out and about much more, making it a little easier for them to suffer with those allergic reactions and even infections. Oh, yeah, it's been making the rounds for sure. Intersar Faulkner is here now with more in tonight's Health You. That's right, Billie Jean and Judy. Getting an ear infection is a common thing that we see in children, and these infections can happen for a variety of reasons, but they can also be painful and cause difficulty sleeping. Ear tubes may be a course of treatment. Dr. Ryan Walzak of Lexington ENT and Allergy is here to share more with parents. Dr. Walzak, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. So before we sat down, Dr. Walzak, I said to you, ear tubes, never heard of it. Can you explain what this is? Ear tubes are small tubes, smaller than the size of a pencil eraser, that are surgically inserted in the eardrum, typically in small children who have issues with recurrent ear infections um, or fluid buildup in the ear that can lead to hearing loss or even speech delay. So are ear tubes common and what specifically do they treat? Ear tubes are very common. It's one of the most common surgeries that we do as e ear, nose and throat doctors. Um, about one in three kids will have an ear infection by the age of three, and about one in 15 will, will need ear tubes by that age. They treat recurrent ear infections by allowing us to remove fluid from the, the middle ear or the area behind the eardrum so that fluid doesn't have a tendency to get infected. And so it decreases the number of infections and it also allows a route of treatment. Typically, ear infections are treated with antibiotics in kids. But once there's an ear tube in place, it allows topical medication in the form of antibiotic ear drops to get into the middle ear and directly treat infection. Now, as you mentioned, doctor, it is common. Ear tubes are common, but symptoms or anything that parents should look out for to perhaps go to the doctor's office for this. Yeah, by the time they are a, a kid is getting to me, they'll typically have been to their pediatrician a number of times to receive oral antibiotics. But typically a kid will present with um, fussiness, especially at a young age. They, they really can't communicate that there's pain in their ear. They may be tugging at their ear constantly. Um, poor sleep, fevers, those are all very common indications that your kid may have a, a ear infection and needs to see their pediatrician. And typically if this is happening over and over again, they're, they're going through different uh, rounds of antibiotics, different types of antibiotics. At that point, a pediatrician will typically refer um, the child to a, an ear, nose, and throat specialist to consider ear tubes. Now, I know surgery can, you know, be a scary or frightening thing for both parents and the child. So can you just walk us through surgery day once a patient comes to you guys? Yeah, I, I always try to reassure parents that this is one of the most common surgeries that's performed. Um, my part actually takes about five or ten minutes, okay, the entire process. Uh, of, of taking the child to the operating room, putting them to sleep, doing the surgery and waking them up takes probably less than 30 minutes. Um, it is a general anesthetic, but they don't require a breathing tube. Okay, they, we usually help them breathe just with a mask over the face. And while, while the anesthesiologist is doing that, I'm looking in the ear under a microscope, making a small incision, removing the fluid with suction, and then placing a, that small tube through the hole to prevent it from closing and preventing buildup of that fluid. So this is a pretty quick procedure, you would say. What Very happens quick. after the procedure is done? After the procedure, the, the, the child and their parents will typically go home. Pain is very mild. At most, I would say that a child would maybe need a little bit of liquid Tylenol over the counter. Um, um, but most of the time, they do just fine. Um, and it's very common that, that they may have drainage from the ear for a few days and I or another ENT surgeon may give them ear drops to use if that, if that happens. So pretty mild side effects afterwards. Would you say long term, are there any side effects that parents should worry about? The things that I mostly counsel uh, parents on long term is that a lot of the kids that I'm putting ear tubes in are very young. And so it may be that when those tubes fall out, typically after a year or so, the eardrums will often heal. And then unfortunately, they may get the problem again. And so I counsel them that, that, that they may, may need another set of tubes in the future. Um, the other thing I caution parents on is that it is possible that when those tubes fall out, the hole doesn't heal. 
Okay, and that's another set of problems. That's very rare. That happens probably less than 1% of the time. All right, Dr. Walzak, thank you so much for this important information. Parents, I know this will help you out. For more information or to make an appointment for Lexington ENT and Allergy, you can visit their website, entlexington.com, or you can call that number there on your screen. You can also find this full interview on our website. Just head to wigstv.com slash health you. Doctor, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.